G'day aspiring engineers, welcome to this Q&A session. I had a question from uh, Robert, and Robert writes, I'm just starting out with 3D printing, I have yet to buy one. And this is just a hobby. I have no intention of paying hundreds of dollars on software to tinker with something that I'm merely interested in. Would the disabled features of Fusion 360 prevent me from 3D printing my creation? Well, Robert, the short answer is no. You can 3D print your creation just fine. Fusion 360 is still free and it's still the best alternative for hobbyists, makers, students, inventors and small business. Now, full disclosure, I'm using the educational version of Fusion 360 because I, until just recently, was teaching at a university. But I do intend to buy the full version very shortly and for the same reason that Vladimir intends to do the same thing. And I'll point you to Vladimir's post shortly. In this video, I want to point you to the official announcements and to the comments of some other YouTubers. I also want to demonstrate to you how to use the archiving feature and to archive all but 10 of your projects and then how to get them out of the archive and how to work around the new restrictions. So here's the official announcement and you can see a little bit further down the page, you've got the actual changes in a table. Now here's the thing, Autodesk, that is Fusion 360, have tried to think how they can continue to make Fusion 360 free and make it free for hobbyists, but crippled for manufacturers who really should pay for the full version. If you're a hobbyist, it's okay. You're not going to miss out. Now let's look at what some of these other YouTubers are saying. Neil says that it's a downgrade, and I think that's the most pessimistic out of the bunch of these. I don't really agree with him. Angus says, guys, you should have seen this coming. And Angus, uh, if you watch his whole video, he does actually get around to explaining how you can actually work with it. There are some restrictions that Autodesk is now walking backwards. As of this morning, 26th of September 2020, they're putting STEP back into the file formats that you can export. Also, if you're wanting to do CNC machining, one of the things that they've taken out is the ability to rapid your machine. But as Lars Christensen explained this morning, you can actually get in and edit your G code and put the rapid movements in it. And it's, it's a pretty advanced topic. Angus also talks about the 10 document limit, which is a real thing. And that's what I want to talk about after this. Now, Kevin's pulling a face, but he does actually give you some good help uh, in showing you how to export all of your step files in bulk if you really want to. Now, this is useful if you're really upset, so much so that you're going to leave. Well, Tom has a broken heart and he's reliving the messy breakup that happened with Onshape two years ago. Well, I got hurt in that mess myself, but there are at least signs that Fusion is reconsidering. As I said, they're bringing step files back into the export menu as of this morning. Now, here's Lars with a straight face. I've never seen him so subdued. Normally, he's always smiling, and Lars is really like the human face of Fusion 360. Well, you've got to include Brad Tallis in that, and that's really the difference between Onshape and Fusion 360. You know, back then, I tried to talk to Onshape, and there was nothing, no reply, not even an echo. But at least Fusion 360 are online, they're participating in the conversations, they're watching everything, and they're at least they're listening, and they've walked back on some of the things that they were proposing. So really, it's no big deal if you really are a hobbyist. So now let me show you now how to archive and to restore your projects after you've archived them. Right, here's Fusion 360. And up here in the top left, way to the left, you see Show Data Panel. And that's all of this, the libraries and samples that you get with Fusion 360. Further up, you'll find your own projects. Here's a few of mine. You might remember the last tutorial that we did together was this Geneva mechanism. And uh, this is the assembly file. This is a 3D printing project. Let's go back to the home of the project panel and let's archive one of these. I'll show you how to do it. Right click and click archive. It gives you a bit of a warning. You can read those, no big deal and it disappears from the list. Now I'll show you how to restore it in a minute just before we go there. This is what we've been doing in our tutorials so far, a nice simple assembly. Now this one has one for the top of the assembly, then for each component, three components, makes a total of four documents that you'd be up for out of your 10 of the 10 document limit. And now we could do that quite easily as you'll agree. And if we wanted to do another one, we could just simply archive this one and then go on with something else. But I propose to show you how to work with these limits and we can do something more complex. Here's a sub-assembly of a project that I'm working on and I want to use this one as a, an educational project uh, not too far in the future. Now this one is a sub-assembly of a larger assembly 
Notice that we've got the assembly file and then we've got a number of components here, two that are linked to another file, but there are another one, two, three, four, five, five, and then there's a bunch of standard components that came from McMaster Car. So there's probably eight documents in this subassembly. So you can imagine that you might work on this subassembly, have everything else archived, and then you might archive this one and go on to something else. For instance, the tensioner assembly. Similarly, this one has the main assembly file, three linked files, and then other components here are the tensioner arm, the rider arm. Don't count the fasteners because they are just standard parts and they're within the assembly file anyway. So there's maybe uh, six or eight part files involved in this subassembly. And you can imagine that this whole project, this belt grinder, is going to be a fair bit bigger. We've got the stand here, and uh, you could do the drawing of the stand. I propose to show you how to do this using the personal use version. I'm sure there'll be a way. We'll get to it. Now let's talk about restoring a project that you've archived. If you go into a project, then you see this little icon here, the little world with the eye, and it says open on the web. Click on that, and up she comes. We're in the mechanisms project. I'm going to go back to the home. Uh, now we're in the archived projects and belt grinder version 3 was the one that I archived. And as you mouse over these things you see that you get the restore button here. So it was version 3 that we did. I'm going to restore it. Let's go back to Fusion 360. Go back to her home. And there it appears back in the project panel. So folks that's how to archive your projects and restore them. Now remember all of those YouTubers that we looked at a few moments ago all agree that the changes are not a deal breaker, so stick with Fusion 360. Well there you go folks, I'll see you next time.